We are joined by Nathan Lewin, the president and majority owner of the BCHL's 18th franchise, the Cranbrook Bucks. It must sound pretty good. <laughs> I never expected it to sound like that, but uh, that's where we are now. When did you start this process? When did you decide that this was something you wanted to pursue? Um, it was probably back almost a year ago now um, of, of kind of getting things together. Um, yeah, it just kind of started off as obviously with everything we'd heard from from what was going on with the Kootenai Ice. You know, I thought it was important that, you know, somebody step up and bring and bring hockey back knowing that, um, you know, hockey was leaving. And so I, I began a process and it, it wasn't long before we ended, I identified obviously the BCHL as, as the best league as far as um, the talent and the on-ice uh, um, abilities of the, of the players. Um, and it made sense. It, it was the natural fit for here, the way that the league is going. Um, so that was an easy decision for, for me to make um, that way. And then obviously bringing on, um, I brought on Scott, you know, quite early into, into, into helping me. Scott Niedermeyer. Yep, Scott Niedermeyer. And then um, just kept plugging away with the league. There was so much back and forth. There was so many hoops to jump through. There was so many, so much documentation, so much um, analysis and marketing and my, my entire plan had to be, you know, completely laid out for them. So um, there was a lot of back and forth and then bringing in Adam and then after that the um, um, Stephen Craig was, was kind of that last bit of expertise we needed um, in our group to, to be everything that we are and it couldn't have worked out better. We couldn't have better people in our ownership. And you are familiar with the BCHL. You, you played 13 games back in 2007, 2008. What do you remember of the league? It's a fast league and there's a lot of skill. Um, I, I remember going there and um, not really noticing a, a drop off in, in, in uh, much in skill level um, from the WHL and uh, the top end guys. I was fortunate enough to play with Justin Schultz who's now obviously in the NHL, won Stanley Cups. Um, and so, yeah, I was kind of exposed to, to some, some pretty high level players right away. Mm -hmm. Now, as this all came together, how did you come about settling on the name and what you were going to, the identity you wanted to form for this team? So I, I really wanted to make sure that it encompassed Cranbrook and the East Kootenays and who we are. We're hunters where we, we run into to these things on our way to work, right? Like we, they're part of the fabric of the East Kootenays. And Probably outside watching our interview right now. Yes. I remember the morning after I, we announced, I went to my back fence, I was feeding the dog, and I look out and there's four big bucks just sitting right there. Um, so it was, it was a fitting name, um, and I think it, it, it's the reception of the name has been, been very good. And talk about creating that, that identity, putting a logo to the name. How did that process go? Um, well, we got a lot of help from um, Arthur Tank at Wolfpack. Um, he, he really made the design come to life. He, he, he took my, the vision that we had for it, and he really made it real, and he, and he exceeded our expectations. Um, he did a great job designing a, a logo that looks mean and tough, but at the same time is uh, the the you know is something that you're you're proud to wear on your shirt or your hat. Talk about your experience with the BCHL. What was the reception like on the other end? Well, they were very excited at the prospect of bringing Cranbrook into their league. Um, the league is going in in some really cool directions. Um, with um, obviously the, new, the, the commissioner and there's been quite a bit of ownership change in the last uh, even few months. Um, but they're bringing in quality people and, it's, and that's what I really like about the league is it's quality people, it's, it's about relationships and it hasn't grown so big that it's just, it's just pure business or just pure, um, you know, just trying to everyone make it t on their own. It's a community of, of people trying to make, you know, help kids get to the next level. And uh, that's something I can get behind. And uh, it, 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 it was a good fit. Now, and you're, as, as you create this team, you've also created uh, a team. Of, uh, it's, a, it's a family running this team right now. It's you and it's your family. It's your wife and your kids. Um, how important is family to you throughout this whole process and, and what you want to establish? 
Well, that's that's what we want to be here. Is we the Bucks is, is just a big family, and we want our fans to feel like they're part of of what we're doing here. We want every partner, every um, every relationship that we make, whether it's a player or or a billet or a volunteer, we want them to feel like like they are a part of what we're doing here. Um, so for me, having this as a family-run thing, obviously my wife does does a fantastic job of running this office, uh, even in the short time you know we've been we've been open. Um, but it's, it was really important to me to, to have that family feeling and to know that this is, this is, this is Cranbrook's team. This is our little family and we're going to welcome you know, anyone who wants to be a part of it. They're, they're welcome to join it. Now, your career t took you from being in Cranbrook as a member of the Kootenai Ice off to the AHL, the NHL. What did you learn when you left Cranbrook that you now bring back to Cranbrook? as far as just an organization mm -hmm. and, and, and the sense of community? Yeah, I, I, I got to experience a lot of different fans, a lot of different markets, a lot of different buildings. Um, you know, I, I've seen things run multiple different ways from the top, whether that be the ownership or the, or the managing uh, uh, directors, whether that be the GM or the business side. You know, we've, I've seen a lot of different ways to do it. And I, I like to think that from that, you know, I've kind of designed what I, I see as the way to do it, especially in a market where relationships are so important. Um, so going off, and, and even in even a place like Buffalo where I played, there, there was still that tight-knit community feel to even that big city. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, compared to Cranbrook, at least it's a big city. And, you know, the fans, you know, they're out at a restaurant after the game and they're all, you know, hanging out together, you know. We weren't winning very much, so when we won, it was a big deal. Um, but that sense of community was something that uh, really struck as what made um, them successful. And then um, honesty and integrity from, from the top, it, it bleeds into the, re the rest of the organization. So now there's obviously a lot of work to do. What, uh, what is on your schedule and, and, and what has to be done in the months leading up to taking the ice next September for the 2020-21 season? So hockey operations is obviously the side that you know we, we want to make sure we, we give our full attention to. Um, so hiring a coach and GM um, is, is on our list. I've already got some, some, some resumes coming across my desk, which is great. Um, you know, might be tough because we're mid-season and a lot of people already have a job, but um, you know we're talking to a lot of advisors, talking to a lot of people, making sure that uh, we, we don't just get a person, we get the right person for that job. Uh, and then on the scouting side, making sure that uh, our scouting network is, is wide and broad and, and we're looking at as many kids as we can. Um, we can offer a lot of opportunity, obviously with our roster at zero right now, um, but we can, we can use that to our advantage. When that day comes and this team takes the ice. What do you, how do you think you're going to feel when you get there, looking looking that far off into the future right now? You know, I, I I've always been the kind of guy like I'm always looking like what's my next project and and it, there's always going to be something on the go. There's always going to be something. Yes, I, I I'm sure I'll want to sit back and enjoy that, um, but uh, you know I I love putting my heart into in, into stuff like this and, and meaningful stuff. And so I'm sure I'll be looking for for the next thing we can do. Well, Nathan, thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank All you the very best. much.